Um, I want to talk about, or actually want to initialize a discussion on value add. And some of you might ask, but um, you know, aren't we already adding value? And I would actually venture to say that um, a large portion of our products actually don't add value. Um, a big portion add little value, and there's, and there's a sprinkle of actually products which actually add of, uh, adds value. And why this is important, uh, I think especially now, is the fact that our social economic um, circumstances have changed. And the fact that products currently provide um, little to no value. And as a business, there's an opportunity for people to actually um, take this as an opportunity to stand out and uh, there will be opportunity for designers to find ways that they can actually add value. So I'll go through um, first, just describing kind of what the situations are which leads, lead, led to this, um, and also then a business reason why you should change, um, which would help you convince your uh, CEO on why to actually focus more on this. And then I will talk about um, two ways that you can find value. So there will be uh, five reasons for how to just change your perspective, just to see things differently and four ways on actually just sharpening your tools. So let me just um, share my screen so you can get to the first part. There we go. Let's go. Great. Okay. So firstly, I guess we have to start with the bad news. Um, is our current um, socioeconomic circumstances. Um, COVID, I guess we all are a bit uh, in South Africa, but gutful. If you're not South African, that means kind of like up to the chin. Um, and, you know, it became, it's more difficult to find jobs. It's more difficult to actually improve yourself, uh, to climb the social ladder. Um, and what COVID has done um, is kind of exposed how fragile our economic systems are. And it has also exposed kind of the poor distribution that we have for uh, opportunities for people. Um, it just announced that a third of the South African middle class um, basically going to be wiped out because of COVID. So there goes a big portion of your, uh, you know, your market of people that are able to buy, buy for anything. Um, and also, uh, we're currently sitting at 32% unemployment and it almost looked like it's climbing a percent almost every couple of months. So the means to, you know, to climb and improve for people to improve themselves are getting quite challenging. And um, product um, also takes part in this in giving people opportunity. But first, before I get to just talking about what product does or don't do, um, I think uh, we should probably talk about you know, what is value. Now, value is, is not about, um, you know, it's not a moral thing value um, of things that contribute to people uh, you know, uh, having prosperity, um, the things that help us to actually you know, uh, actualize ourselves, um, become masters of things, um, having meaningful work. Um, and if you look at kind of like how Dan O'Reilly talks about motivation, you know, acknowledgement, uh, the effort we put into stuff, you know, having a sense of completion, doing meaningful stuff, um, you know, they're all very similar and you know, these things are important for us to um, you know, have a meaningful life and also um, add to others and connect to others. And the second uh, thing that I think is also important is, um, is the thing called time. Um, I like the, the, the quote from Tim Ferriss saying, you can lose money and make it back with you. There is something fundamental uh, problematic uh, and the fact that we have free products. When free Hi, Beth. Products sorry, actually... sorry to disturb yeah. or interject. Uh, we seem to be losing your audio. Um, it's coming and going for some reason. Oh. Um, I'm not sure. Oh, uh, what now? Is this okay? Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's okay now. Um, I'm not sure if the, if it's okay. the connection is dropping at all. 
Okay. Um, just, just let me know if, 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 it, if, it, if it's happening again. Um, I'll see what I can do on the side. Um, I'll just try and stay close to the mic if that maybe um, I'm moving or something. Um, okay, so I was just talking about the, the value of time. Um, and we have moved towards a lot of products being free, but what we're actually taking from people um, is their attention. And that is actually the one thing that is uh, basically um, you, you can't put a price on it because that's the only currency that people have that's extremely valuable. And we seem to take that in exchange um, and not providing value in return. Uh, we continuously want to take their attention. So I think it's very important for us to, to remember that when we take time from people that it's actually important to give value in return. So just keeping those values in mind, um, looking at what currently products are doing and what products should be doing and kind of not providing for us. Um, generally speaking, if you look at products, you've got, you can divide it up into like three types of products. Um, one being uh, utility, you've got entertainment, you've got social. Now, a lot of apps obviously cross these uh, sort of types. They, they're not unique to each one of them. But each of these categories, just on a pure level, provide something for people uh, on, in a, on their daily lives. And if you uh, just look, start with utility or uh, tool products, like if financial planning, you know, email, anything in basic that helps you, uh, you know, build things, uh, master things, um, uh, and create stuff, then it adds to our sense of uh, you know, autonomy, uh, completion, uh, sense of mastery. Uh, so you can understand how if those things don't do what they do, it kind of stops us from actually you know, climbing and improving ourselves, uh, climbing the social ladder uh, and building better lives. Entertainment, um, you know, entertainment is important for us. Uh, it allows us or it takes our attention away for a while morning lives, um, you know, it provides us happiness. Uh, it's kind of a, it's a powerful medicine that helps aids us, um, our health and our well-being. The question I guess that do come up is kind of like how much do we need of it? Uh, according to, to this, some apps, it would be 24-7. Um, then the third, uh, the social apps, uh, your Facebook, your Twitter, you know, your uh, Instagram, uh, social medias. Um, now, humans are, we always hear, are inherently social creatures. Um, and, you know, we need to maintain a social connectivity to people because it optimizes our physical uh, well-being. You know, we bond with people. Uh, we, uh, our friends, you know, help us, listen to us. You know, they're always caring about us. Uh, and help us deal with, with difficult things. And you might now already start to wonder or start to notice that you know, some of these products are actually not necessarily doing what um, the benefits that we are supposed to be getting from them. So while we are on social, um, I'll go um, and talk a little bit about Facebook and Twitter. So if you, the last time you were on Twitter or Facebook, you think you were busy optimizing your, uh, your well-being, um, extremely a lot of conflict on the on the platforms um, and because of how this system is inherently the medium is set up so if you look at uh, your facebook when you started the first time you are basically encouraged to, to connect to as many people as you can because the more you can connect the more stuff you can have in your feed uh, and the more reason you have to be there so the medium also so changes the social interaction because instead of actually having you know, having 12 friends around a table where you, you know you can discuss things and you can give people attention, suddenly you have a million people who kind of you know want your attention. The other thing is that happened in social media is the fact that because you have you're posting self stuff about yourself, what ends up happening is that you post your best self. So basically, what people see are a curated version of your life. And 
the, the consequence of that is that we tend to um, go into comparison mode because now we're looking at, oh, but your life is pretty wonderful. My life isn't. And that has led to an increase on social isolation, depression, anxiety, and you're actually not getting the benefit in what social is supposed to do for you. Um, another one would be, uh, oh, a classic would be the tools that you use, uh, for example, for education. So if you want to learn something, you know, the goal for learning is to you learn the skill and then you apply it. Because then you, know, you can uh, improve yourself, you can uh, accomplish new things, uh, you can get a better job, etc. But for online education systems, it's more about you know your next course and your next course and your next course. How many courses have you signed up for and actually have not completed? Because the intention is not for you, it's not about your education, it's for you just to sign up to more courses. Uh, and if you take the, the classic proverb of uh, you know, give a person a fish and you feed them for a day, teach a person to fish and you feed them a lifetime. And if you look at how uh, these tools are actually applying themselves, you know, uh, YouTube is also being for uh, for learning for people where you can sh people share their skills and you can learn something but for YouTube it's not about uh, you know for you about learning it's about the next video um, uh, and watching more videos and more videos and eventually you know you're not really doing anything with your skill you're just consuming more and more of these videos now YouTube obviously is also in, in education uh, uh, I'll just get the head education and have you ever tried to just watch one video and you probably find yourself two or three hours later and you've actually you know, spent a lot more time on there than you wanted to then you start experiencing uh, you know a bit of guilt uh, you do a bit of self-shaming um, you know in, in you didn't complete a task you had set out to do and it's not your fault but these are the experiences that you are getting because the system are set up to keep you there um, and continue taking part. Uh, one more example would be news media, um, where news media, the, what you were supposed to learn from news media were uh, you know, to gain information, to be informed. But when technology kind of grew to a point where everybody could actually do this, take part and you know, share news, suddenly it became a race to be first. And when it became a race to be first, it kind of lost its value. And now we have obviously clearly have a problem with, with fake news and just different opinions. And it's no longer, it's no longer a place where you can actually trust um, the value you're getting from it. Um, the only thing that became important for this news media is basically it's just to be relevant in that moment. And we're not building trust with people anymore because of that. So looking at this these economic conditions looking at what products are not providing or failing to do um i believe there's an opportunity um for people to improve themselves and the businesses um, to add value um, businesses always need a, a reason um you know why to pursue something um, of course, I need to return of investment. So for businesses, I've got you the following. So everybody knows the, the classic story of purple cow. Um, and if we value return of investment, um, we need to consider what drives business value and um, differentiation is one of them. So in this field of products, which are not providing enough value, if any, being the company or the product that do provide value, definitely going to help you stand out. I will also throw in a, a little bit of a FOMO for you. Um, if you don't start now, um, you know, you might be a bit too late because trust is not something that you can build through, you know, your first introductory email or your last contact experience. Trust is like, um, it's like Kung Fu. Now, Kung Fu, when you translate it, actually means skill through time and effort. So it's not just something that you can somehow cheat. You need to put effort and work into it. And it's better to start now. Now, if you're a creator with products um, and you have to find this value, um, where can we find this? Uh, a 
I've got two places you can look at. One is to change your focus, your perspective. And the second one would be, you know, for the tools. Um, first tool, this might be a little bit, oh, sorry, your first focus change. A um, little bit controversial for some people. Um, but UX is not a job title. It started out as a job. You know, there were one person who went around and said, you know, we need to value people. Uh, and they went around to everyone and business asked them to, you know, what's your business case for this? And you now why should we do this? And slowly but surely, you know, people started getting involved. And it kind of started with testing and then realized that, okay, that people don't really understand the product. We got design got involved. Um, and we kind of started expanding on that. We started doing wireframing. We started doing you know, different sketches, different ideas. And this whole idea keep expanding as more departments started joining the conversation. So uh, marketing joined and said, you know, um, we can't call them users. You know, we have to call them customers because, you know, it's, uh, it's not people that just use a product. There's areas outside of it. And so it grew. And now a research came back uh, and kind of joined, although research has always been there. But um, in the old waterfall model, research were a lot more prominent. But because in the kind of agile world, you can't really um, provide that same benefit. Uh, research also had to adapt to kind of their processes to fit in with, um, with UX. And so everybody joined up. Now, what this means is that basically everybody has an input into this, if you want to call it UX, although it's probably a lot wider than that. Um, and we have to get everybody sitting at the table and ask themselves, you know, if we want to put people first, uh, what do we do in our different um, departments that basically helps people um, and don't help people. Which of our stuff that we do puts people first. And if we really value people and what they do, we have to get rid of the stuff that we do that's not beneficial for people and focus more on the stuff that are beneficial for people and allow them to prosper. One group which I feel are still left out of this conversation, which I would love to see uh, join this, is the development. Development um, basically runs in your two week cycles and everybody has to do their stuff in two weeks. Research gets done in two weeks, design gets done in two weeks, testing, everything is in these two week cycles. But why? I mean, does that actually add value to people if we just build features every two weeks? Can't we, can't develop a join and say, oh, Okay, if people are, you know, is the focus and we need to provide value, what do we need to do in order to do that? Okay, so second one on changing focus is willing to understand. So what do I mean by that? So a typical startup process, and I'm generalizing here, a typical startup process would be a founder, a seen opportunity, a problem to be solved, and they, they see there's a market for it, so they do the research and they get a developer, okay, let's pull a rough app and they put it out there and people don't get it. Okay, well, they kind of admit, okay, well we're not really designers. Um, let's get some UI UX person to come in and you bring in a UI UX person and you know, they do their thing and we build, we iterate and we go out. Now, firstly, that is a very narrow starting point because what happened is um, you've already kind of focused on a solution so when you um, enter, you've already cut out a large portion of the experience where people are actually living in, and you've already decided on a solution. So whenever you ask questions, it's in relation to your current solution. And as the second point is just um, with respect to gender typical roles and the fact that kind of how people got brought up and also uh, you know, how we are wired, men are generally uh, focused on fixing things. So, uh, you know, being tech being a very, still a male uh, dom uh, orientated or dominated uh, industry, 
we have a tendency to pull to solve. Um, we want to fix things. And I think what we should do rather is if a founder get an idea, he shouldn't run to bowling first. They should run and get a UX researcher to come in and actually explore the idea and try to understand how people are actually thinking about you know, the problem that you're actually trying to solve. Uh, how does it fit into their world? What are they trying to achieve before you actually start building something? Third thing we can do, the minimum of now, this is quite interesting because we are a very, we believe we are very user-centered um, in our businesses, yet we still talk about the minimal viable product. Now, this is defined from a business perspective, it's not defined from, you know, from a people's perspective. So, what about, what's the minimum viable ad? What can we add in the smallest amount that actually adds value to people? Um, because by definition, if you add value, then you know that should be viable, right? Um, I've seen many products that kind of promise this big value, um, but it's after they build things, after people used the stuff, people put their input and create things that they can actually get to that point where the product is perfect and providing you that full value. That kind of sounds familiar, doesn't it? That kind of sounds like waterfall. Um, Hopefully, we have provide opportunity. Now, seeing that we focus on uh, fixing problems, uh, the problem with that <laughs> is the fact that you fix one and 10 more problems come up. Um, now, there always will be more problems to fix. Um, so maybe instead of you know, making a drill to make holes in a wall, maybe we should create a wall with holes in, you know, provide opportunity. Uh, a solution is very specific um, to a problem, but an opportunity are, uh, you know, our solutions only limited by, by imagination. So instead of just trying to solve that problem, you know, give people the opportunity to use something and actually create more value from it. The fifth thing, which I quite uh, like is built for good people. Someone cheats the system and good people gets another layer they have to jump through in order to do stuff. Um, we are really punishing good people uh, unnecessary. Um, the worst example I have of something like this was a legal department's requirement to uh, for customers to, they was check boxes of about 50 plus items. And you basically, if you're a business, you have to kind of register to basically say what you, what your um, the product is for your business. So if you only do one of them, you have to untick 49 of those boxes. And the reason for that was they want, don't want people to be able to claim in court that they did not see something. So literally this is kind of, this is really punishing good people yesterday in order to catch bad people. And I think we should really focus on, you know, what can we design that actually um, is focused on good people. And for the bad people, you have to put in a little bit more effort. And I will get back, get to that um, when it comes to simplicity, because that actually deals with that uh, under the tools. Um, okay, sharpening your tools. Where can we find, you know, the things that we currently do? How much value is it actually adding for us? And um, where can we actually explore for new ways to find uh, new information to help us make better decisions? There's some excellent work being done by Indy Young uh, doing U uh, UX research. And the great thing about this is that you don't actually need a product. All you need is to actually just talk to people. Um, and you don't have to do it in person. So this is great for the fact that COVID is limiting our work movement you just literally have to speak to people and understand their context of um, you know, the product you are thinking of but you don't talk about the product at all you want to figure out how people think about stuff um, because that determines if your product actually can work or not and you can also see if your product is actually addressing how people think about things um, 
Example would be if I ask you, you know, how do you do your laundry? We all have different ways how we treat a laundry. Some of us will just chuck everything in there. Some of us will separate the black and white. Some of us, are, you know, value how we look, so we take care of our clothes. So we would, you know, wash the delicate things by hand. Or if you put it up uh, on the washing line, some of us would flip it around because you don't want the sun to damage it. So we all have different ways on how we approach something. Um, the same for, have you ever tried to interfere with somebody um, managing their braai? Um, it's never a, a pretty scene. Um, so what do people with thinking style actually capture? What they look at is people's guiding principles. They look at people's inner thinking, so how they think about uh, the different things they deal with in that context. And they look at people's emotional reactions. What are great about thinking styles is the fact that it is mostly demographic free. So you can have a thinking style at the age of 20, at the age of 40, at the 50, and you will have the same thinking style. And secondly, also, depending on context, you can actually change thinking styles. Um, and I probably would venture forth and say, we'll probably replace uh, personas at some point, or at least add a, a, a much bigger layer to the validity of personas. Secondly, um, usability and intent. Um, at our first interviews when we interview customers, we kind of get, um, you know, we talk about their dreams, what are they trying to do, you know, what their intents are. Um, and then we kind of build a product and we go on and then we test usability of the product. And if it's usable, then cool, we build more and go on. But what about the, you know, the, the people's original intent? What do they want to achieve? Are you, are you tracking that? You know, how closer are they actually getting to their intent by using our product? So I think we, we should find opportunity to actually measure that. Um, also, if a designer creates a product, there's usually an intent what you're trying to communicate. Um, do we check for that? Um, you know, if, did they understand the way we are communicating, what we are trying to achieve, and does it make sense to them? Um, thirdly, um, tracking success. Um, this is probably one of the, the biggest ones that we have success so each department will have their own way so we, there's NPS scores there are engagement purchases no but everything is literally our business or product related but how does this connect to uh, you know, people's success you know, the things that they achieve um, now uh, can you measure beyond your product functionality how do you tie what you've created that feature just went out how do you tie that to actually you know people success. Now, an example I can uh, share with you, um, I was involved in a product that basically helped people uh, plan uh, and pay for stuff and basically pay each other. And during this interview uh, with, a, with, a, with a, uh, a woman, she got extremely excited, like seriously, she shouted out and um, everybody afterwards wanted to know, like, what, what was that all about? And what happened was, is that she got excited because the product allowed her to pay her, her staff basically weekly wages. And the great thing about that was for her was the fact that she could pay them through this app and didn't have to pay them in cash. And what is awesome about that was the fact that if she paid them cash, they tend to get robbed. So the product, you know, we had intentions about the product, but it basically solved a lot more for for this person and you know are we tracking those kind of things because that is adding value to people and um, then i have uh the last one which actually is one of my favorites is simplicity um simplicity is um uh, you see it's just you know when you're on a screen you know the less they are on a screen the simpler something but actually simplicity runs a lot more deeper than that and it actually touches on all of your processes uh, that people have to go through on the app um, and the requirements you have. So um, Stephen Anderson and Carl Voss recently wrote a book, I think it's called Getting It Right. 
when they talk about um, our information needs to be understood. So you as a business are communicating to something to the customer, either through the process that people have to go through, they have to understand that, and that has a cost. Now, simplicity is that when you, as a business, take responsibility of that cost, that is simplicity. Um, you know, when you, when you are dealing with that complexity so that people don't have to, that is actually you know, part of simplicity, not just about making less on the screen. Um, a simple example would be uh, if you send an SMS to a, cu to a customer to verify you know, uh, their profile, um, they have to switch to a different app, memorize the, the number, go to the app and pull it in. When if you put in the effort and time and build something uh, more efficiently or, or simpler for them, then your app would automatically read that and, it get, and it's happened. So there are many of these situations where uh, we should put in more effort in that process and take on the cost um, because that is actually part of simplicity. Um, finally, um, uh, not only I think, but I believe if you know uh, people will benefit from our products if they actually add value. Um, I think uh, definitely if they do the same, we will we will benefit from, from their products, um, and you know our work will become more satisfying and meaningful for us. Uh, and you know, I, I think we should uh, climb this mountain uh, to get uh, in order to reach that. Francis, thank you so much for the talk. Um, just uh, apologies to everyone there for the, for the audio coming and going throughout the talk. Um, but I think there's, there's been some great comments on the side in relation to the talk. Um, I don't see any questions from anyone, just checking if there is any questions, um, if anybody would like to add any questions. Um, but definitely some great insights over there. Thank you so much, Pastor. That's good, I'm, I'm looking at some of the some, some of the comments there, yes. <laughs> uh, you don't mess with somebody's bra. <laughs> um, just waiting for any any uh, comment any questions from anyone um I mean, if they if you guys don't have any questions now that is also available via linkedin via twitter you wanted to say something about this uh no I actually just saw somebody there comment about um, jobs to be done um uh, india young is actually they are in the pro uh, process of trying to um see how the two fit so there are 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 some fit between the two um but there are definitely some differences. Um, but I would definitely, if, if you are following in your company jobs to be done, then it's uh, worthwhile um, looking at it um, and add as a benefit. Um, I'll give it a few. We'll give it a few more seconds um, before sure. we break. Um, but let me just check your 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 Twitter handle. What was it? Um, Twitter is just um, AJ, AJ, uh, AJ Cook, uh, CK. Cool. As a handle. So you can ask, if anybody have any questions, they can. Um, yeah. Website is um, thecatalyst.ca.za. Uh, uh, you can email me or you can just contact me on Twitter uh, if you want more information. Um, yeah. More than willing to share. Uh, thank you so much, Baptist. And also, guys, um, on a side note, uh, I mean, Bath is always doing some, some great community work, reach out to him for that. Um, and also he's got a crazy manga collection. Um, so even if you want to reach out uh, with regards to that. Um, but I think we're going to close, we'll um, close the session. Thank you so much, Bath. This um, great talk, great insights. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you so much. Um,